Arcadian Vanguard presents the Wrestling News in your daily wrestling newscast for Saturday, October 8th, 2022. Good morning, I'm Mike Sempervivi. We start today with WWE, AEW, and Impact Wrestling all in action last night with the events in the Northeastern United States. Here's what happened. WWE presented the season premiere episode of SmackDown Live on Fox from the DCU Center in Worcester, Massachusetts. In the main event, a rematch from Class at the Castle and Cardiff, Wales, Gunther successfully defended the Intercontinental title against Sheamus, pinning him after illegally striking him with a shillelagh passed to him by fellow Imperium member Ludwig Kaiser after 18 minutes and 21 seconds. Wild. Gunther with a shillelagh that was handed to him by Kaiser. The official never saw it. Deal with the fight outside the ring. Sheamus went for the bro. Gunther is going to steal the damn match. Following an in-ring welcome from Chief Content Officer Paul Levesque, the show opened with a confrontation between the Bloodline faction and Logan Paul. Paul will challenge the leader of the Bloodline, WWE Universal Champion Roman Reigns at Crown Jewel in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia on November 5th. The other members of the Bloodline were also in action with the Usos and Sami Zayn losing to The New Day and Braun Strowman when Xavier Woods pinned Jimmy Uso and Solo Sokoa defeated Ricochet. The show featured the main roster debuts of Santos Escobar, Joaquin Wilde, and Cruz del Toro of Legado del Fantasma, who attacked Hit Row during an in-ring promo segment. Legado del Fantasma was accompanied by Zelina Vega. The group's former female member, Electra Lopez, was not called up from NXT with the rest of the group. In other happenings, Raquel Rodriguez and Shotzi defeated Zia Lee and Sonya Deville when Rodriguez pinned Deville and Karrion Cross and Drew McIntyre brawled during a non-match segment, tacking each other with a leather strap. Cross and McIntyre will meet tonight in a strap match at Extreme Rules in Philadelphia. Also last night, AEW presented Battle of the Belts 4 live on TNT from the Entertainment and Sports Arena in Washington, D.C. In the main event of the one-hour TV special, FTR successfully defended the Ring of Honor World Tag Team Championship against Gates of Agony, the team of Toa Leona and Khan, when Dax Harwood pinned Khan with a backslide at 13 minutes and 30 seconds. Wardlow and Samoa Joe came to the aid of FTR after the match when they were attacked by the Gates of Agony and their embassy stablemate Brian Cage. Wardlow hammering Brian Cage and Toa Leona in the corner, but now Cage. Well, this is not looking good for Wardlow and this FTR. Is mayhem, man. Bring out Joe! The great equalizer, here we go. The Ring of Honor World Television Champion, Samoa Joe! Rest of the fans, they love Joe, because <laughs> Joe loves to fight. Also on the show, TBS champion Jade Cargill's record went to 39-0 with a defeat of Willow Nightingale by pinfall in 7 minutes and 22 seconds. After the match, Cargill's title belt was stolen from ringside by former AEW Women's Champion Nyla Rose. In the opening match of the program, Pac retained the All-Atlantic title via pinfall over Trent Beretta after illegally hitting him with the timekeeper's hammer. Just prior to Battle of the Belts, the Entertainment and Sports Arena also hosted a live hour of AEW Rampage on TNT. In the opening match of Rampage, the Blackpool Combat Club trio of Wheeler Yuta, Claudio Castagnoli, and AEW World Champion John Moxley defeated Roosh and Private Party when Yuta submitted Mark Wen of Private Party with an arm scissors. Underhook, and now transitions over. And Sh- short arm scissors? Yeah. No, no, that's a bicep slice. And That's a bicep slice. Yeah, Yuta- the left arm is in, is hooked in. That's the difference. You got him. There we go. Well, whatever it was, you got him. Winners of this match, by submission, the team of Wheeler Yuta. Claudio Castagnoli and John Moxley, Blackpool Combat Club! Mr. Ross, man with the mask, it's been a pleasure. Thank you, Thank William. you and good night. Pac worked double duty last night as he teamed up with the Lucha Brothers to successfully defend the AEW World Trios title 
against the Dark Order trio of John Silver, Alex Reynolds, and Ten when Pac put Reynolds to sleep with his Brutalizer submission hold. The match was held in commemoration of the second anniversary of the last match of the late Brody Lee, the original leader of the Dark Order. In other results, Tay Mello and Anna Jay defeated Madison and Sky Blue, and Tony Nese and Josh Woods defeated Brian Pillman Jr. and Griff Garrison. After the match, Nice and Woods manager Mark Sterling officially named his team Varsity Athletes, claiming that Pillman and Garrison could no longer refer to themselves as the Varsity Blondes. Impact presented the 18th annual Bound for Glory, the company's premier event of the year, live on pay-per-view from the Albany Armory in Albany, New York. Josh Alexander retained the Impact World Championship in the main event, pinning former Impact champion Eddie Edwards, after a C4 spike in 28 minutes and 3 seconds. Alexander was jumped after the match by Edwards' Honor No More faction, but was saved by Bully Ray, with the show ending with a stare-down between Alexander and Bully Ray. Ray had earned a title shot earlier in the evening by winning the Call Your Shot gauntlet match. Bully and Steve Macklin were the final two survivors of the gauntlet after 27 minutes and 12 seconds, and Bully then pinned Macklin in 2 minutes and 4 seconds in the singles portion of the match. Jordan Grace successfully defended the Impact Knockouts title against Masha Slamovich, pinning her in 16 minutes and one second after a Grace driver from the second turnbuckle. This was Slamovich's first defeat in Impact since she debuted there in January. In the show's only two title changes, the Death Dolls team of Taya Valkyrie and Jessica won the Knockouts tag team title from Donna Perrazzo and Chelsea Green when Jessica pinned Green and Frankie Kazarian also won the X Division title from Speedball Mike Bailey by submission. In other results, Matt Taven and Mike Bennett retained the Impact World Tag Team titles against the Motor City Machine Guns when Taven pinned Chris Sabin with his feet on the ropes, and Mickey James beat Mia Yim in a match in which James's career was on the line. On the Bound for Glory pre-show, Brian Myers successfully defended the digital media title against Dirty Dango, formerly Fandango in the WWE, and Raven was inducted into the Impact Hall of Fame by his longtime in-ring rival, Tommy Dreamer. Thank you for this honor. People who know me know I can be a smartass, egotistical, loud, basically a dick. Uh, It comes from having narcissistic and histrionic personality disorder, as well as being severely ADD and self-destructive. Not qualities that are great for succeeding in life, but qualities that are fantastic in a professional wrestler. In AEW news, AEW world champion John Moxley has signed a new five-year contract extension with the company, according to an official statement released last night. In addition to his duties as a wrestler, Moxley's backstage role with the company will be expanded to include coaching and mentoring talent. The announcement also indicated that moving forward, Moxley will only be appearing for AEW and its international media partners, including New Japan Pro Wrestling. This would likely mean that Moxley would no longer be appearing for GCW and other American independents, although that was not explicitly stated in the release. Said Tony Khan in the release, John is a great world champion for us in his third reign. His wrestling mind is invaluable, and our roster is lucky to have the opportunity to utilize him as a mentor and a coach as we continue to build the stars of today and tomorrow. In WWE news, The Nine Lives of Vince McMahon, Vice TV's documentary on the former WWE chairman, will air Tuesday night, October 18th, as a lead-in to Tales from the Territories, Vice's new wrestling documentary series from the makers of Dark Side of the Ring, according to a report this week in the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. Unaffiliated with the producers of Dark Side of the Ring or Tales from the Territories, The documentary will cover McMahon's career and the many scandals involving him over the years, including the most recent one involving hush money payments made to former female employees, which led to McMahon stepping down from his leadership roles in the company last July. The Observer's Dave Meltzer stated he was among those interviewed for the documentary, as was Figure Four Weekly's Brian Alvarez. WrestleNomics' Brandon Thurston also revealed yesterday that he was interviewed, as did Vince Russo last month. The Wrestling News' Brian Solomon was among those interviewed for the documentary, and Solomon was told that Chris Jericho, Eric Bischoff, and Ross and Bruce Hart were also amongst those approached by Vice TV. 
In WWE news, Olympic gold medalist and WWE developmental talent Gable Stevenson underwent heart surgery last month and is currently training full-time at the WWE's Performance Center in Orlando, according to an exclusive ESPN report yesterday. The procedure was an ablation to treat Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome, a form of atrial fibrillation. Stevenson revealed to ESPN that he had been suffering from the effects of the rare congenital heart defect since 2020 before he competed at the Tokyo Summer Olympics and didn't decide to undergo the surgery until advised to do so by WWE's medical staff. The surgery and subsequent recovery delayed his full-time start at the WWE Performance Center, which was not publicly known until now. It had been previously reported that there were no creative plans for Stevenson, but the reason had not yet been revealed until now. Said Paul Levesque to ESPN, We're glad to see that Gable is healthy and training full-time at our Performance Center in Orlando. WWE takes pride in our best-in-class medical team, which has guided Gable through the process to ensure he has a long, healthy career with WWE. In a follow-up to yesterday's news on the WWE commentary team restructuring, Nigel McGuinness was released by WWE earlier this week, according to PW Insider. McGuinness had been with WWE since 2016, working as a lead announcer for NXT, as well as NXT UK, Main Event, and 205 Live. He first appeared as a WWE commentator for the United Kingdom Championship Tournament, held in December 2016 and January 2017. Best known for his years in Ring of Honor, including an 18th-month reign as ROH World Champion from 2007 to 2009, McGinnis retired from wrestling in 2011 and worked as a commentator for ROH prior to making the move to WWE. Mark the Undertaker Calloway's one-man show will be coming next to Boston at Big Night Live on November 25th, the night before WWE Survivor Series at the nearby TD Garden. Entitled Undertaker, One Dead Man Show, the event has been held before sellout audiences in Nashville, Tennessee during the weekend of SummerSlam and in Cardiff, Wales during the weekend of Clash at the Castle. Its most recent sellout took place last night in Philadelphia as part of the WWE's Extreme Rules weekend. The show features Callaway in an intimate stage setting, telling stories from his wrestling career and taking questions from the audience. In MLW news, the company announced yesterday that it had signed Sam Adonis, one of the most successful American stars in Lucha Libre, and a top Rudo for both CMLL and AAA. Adonis is scheduled to debut for MLW on October 30th at the Fightland 22 event in the 2300 Arena in Philadelphia. His opponent has yet to be announced. Adonis wrestled for CMLL from 2016 to 2018 and has been with AAA since last year. He held the AAA World Trios title earlier this year with DMT Azul and Puma King. Real name Sam Polinski, Adonis is the younger brother of Matt Polinski, better known in the WWE as Corey Graves. And we finish up with some news from outside the ring. Dwayne Johnson officially ruled out a run for the presidency of the United States in an interview set to air this weekend on CBS Sunday Morning. Is running for president off the table now? It's off the table, yes. <laughs> it is off the table. I will say this, because it requires the B-side to this. I love our country and everyone in it. I also love being a daddy. And that's the most important thing to me, is being a daddy. Number one, especially during this time, this critical time in my daughter's lives, because I know what it was like to be on the road and be so busy that I was absent. Um, for a lot of years, and my first daughter's growing up in these critical age, at this critical time in her life, and that's what the presidency will do. So my number one priority is my daughters. Sure, CEO sounds great, but the number one thing I want to be is daddy. That's it. Johnson had been rumored to be considering a run for the presidency in 2024 or 2028, stemming in part from several interviews he had given, including a February 2021 interview in USA Today and a November 2021 interview in Vanity Fair. And before we leave you today, we'd like to remind you that however you consume your content, you can find the wrestling news 24 hours a day and seven days a week across social media. On Twitter, follow us at Wrestling News AV. Our Facebook page is also Wrestling News AV. 
The wrestling news can also be found on the Arcadian Vanguard YouTube page. And for those who utilize Amazon Echo devices, just tell Alexa to play the Wrestling News Podcast. And remember to make sure you add podcast at the end. Once again, for daily updates, breaking news, and more, follow the wrestling news across social media. And that's the news for today. If anything happens, we will be here to tell you about it. No clickbait, no paywall, just the wrestling news. The Wrestling News is a division of Arcadian Vanguard, and the Wrestling Newscast is a production of the Arcadian Vanguard Podcast Network.